spoken to me about this and I'm pausing on certain areas so that there will be a revelation. Just again this week we had a fantastic uh, men's home cell and I sat and we spoke and some of the questions came out, especially the one that I spoke about last week. Why does a good God let bad things happen? Okay, and it's like people don't fathom it yet, which I understand because religion and this world has taught us wrong. So your whole life you are being taught that God does certain things and then you come to this and it's so challenging that you can't wrap your head around it. So we will pause on it and we will talk about it, talk about it, talk about it until you get it. Until you understand the full concept of it, alright? So we're going to continue with this and today I'm going to focus more on dominion, kingdom, king, dominion. <clears throat> alright, so let's quickly recap and then we go. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, the Bible says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So basically what it says is seek first the kingdom. So you seek the king and the kingdom. When you find the king, you find his king domain. Okay? When you find the king, you understand what he dominates. When you find the king, you understand what he rules. So first seek the king and his kingdom. Okay? And then once you have found the king, who is God, the kingdom of God, you find God, you discover who he is, you realize who he is, then you start to operate in this kingdom, in this domain which he owns. And you are part of it. There's so much that I can say about it. But then he says, and his righteousness. The word righteousness is important because the righteousness has got nothing to do with God, even though it's got everything to do with God. Because God is right. Whether you like it or not, God is right. Okay? But God's not evil. No, you missed that. God is right, but God is not evil. So we can never accuse God from doing evil things. How can a good God let bad things happen? It's accusing a good God, a king who is only good of doing evil things. You can't. No. Which means you don't understand what is actually going on. Amen. So we have to wrap our head around it to understand why certain things happen the way it happens and how do we operate according to these principles in Jesus' name. So righteousness has got everything to do with you and me. So he says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Righteousness means to be in right standing with God. So seek God, seek his domain and find your position. Because your position is a position of righteousness. You're standing right before God. That's what we've been speaking about the last few weeks. That it's all about position and purpose. Okay? Once you find your position. Once you find your identity in Him. Once you find the place that you have been placed in His kingdom. Once you find the position that He gave you in His kingdom. And you understand it. And you fathom it. Then you can walk out the purpose that God has for you. And the purpose that God has for you is to be a king, is to be also a person of dominance, a person that has reign and rule, and you dominate certain things in your life, okay? This is the thing about kingdom. That's why we are part of a kingdom, but in earth, everybody goes for democracy, democracy. Now, when you look at the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had about the big uh, statue, then you find the different governments in the book of Daniel. And Daniel talks about it and he says that the head was gold. And then it continues with the shoulders of bronze. And it goes down, 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 down. And then it comes to the feet. The feet of the giant was clay and iron mixed. Now all of you know that if you build, you can't mix clay and iron. Okay? You can try to support the iron in the clay and support the clay with the iron. But ultimately, if there's a lot... All the builders will know exactly what I'm talking about. When there is a lot of heat and cold, heat and cold, guess what's going to happen? A lot of cracks and it's going to tear apart. So when it comes to the bottom, the feet, that government system is the weakest of all other government systems. When it talks about the head, it talks about kingdom. When it talks about the feet, it talks about democracy. So the, the weakest government system in the world is democracy. The strongest government system in the world is kingdom. Because it's two complete different things. We as Christians belong to a kingdom. We're not in a democracy. You can't vote for God. You can't vote and say the majority says we have found no confidence in God. Therefore, we don't want a God. Skilag is it by a stop. No. 
the king stays the king. He's got to die. And the wonderful thing about our king is he did die, but he couldn't die. He died, but he rose again because nothing can kill him. Which means if your security is in this God who can't die, then you are okay because he will forever and ever and ever live and he will forever and ever be good and he will forever and ever be there for you. He will always be dependable. That's our God. So the Bible is clear. He says, seek the kingdom. Seek God. Seek his domain. Seek his rule. Find your position, which is in righteousness, which means God does not count you for your sin. God does not count you for what you've done wrong. No, because you find yourself in Christ. You give yourself to Christ. You believe in Jesus, which means Jesus became your sin. Jesus became the punishment for your sin, which means now position, you position yourself in right standing with God. And now you become a minister of reconciliation where you say to other people, you don't have to die in your sin. You don't have to struggle in your sin. You don't have to be overcome by your sin. There is a position that you can find yourself in God that you stand before God where you are right. That's nothing lekker there is om te weet, jy is reg nie. Dis die waarheid. Any, any accusation, any comment, any um, quarrel or fight or there's nothing better than just to know you're right. <laughs> because you have the victory. If you know you're right, you're right, right? And then nothing can convince you that you're wrong. Because you know it. Not because it's your truth, because it's a higher truth. God says now, seek first my presence. Seek me. Seek the way I do things. Seek to stand in the position that I have given you. My righteousness is not because of me. My righteousness is because of what He has done for me. All I have to do is find my position. Once I find my position, I find my identity in Him. Because His great I am becomes my reality. I am because He is. I find who I am. I find who He created me to be. So that I don't have to be confused. This world... All the world wants to do is to confuse you the whole time about who you are. And then the world says, no, we don't. We want to liberate you. We just want to give you the option to choose who you want to be. But you have no clue who you are. Then you go to them and they tell you, just be whatever you want to be. And you're like, but I don't know. There's nothing worse than that. Do not know why you are here. The greatest challenge for teenagers is purpose. The greatest challenge for teenagers is purpose and identity. Teenagers, they always ask these questions. What am I doing here? I mean, every teenager goes through a time where they start to think that everybody's aliens except them. Ever felt like that? I remember it. When I looked at everybody, I'm like, I'm the only human amongst all these aliens. Look at these strange people. What's wrong with them? And I would ask myself, so, so what's the purpose of all of this? What am I doing here? What am I doing here? If life is this... Going to work, coming back grumpy, chase your kids around, get them in, uh, to go to a place that they don't like, school, sleep the night, get up the next day, do the same thing again, do the same thing again, do the same thing again. Every teenager comes to a place and says, is that life? Is that the purpose of life? Is that what I want to be one day? And then they go into university and they make sure that they do everything except that. Until they hit their quarter life crisis at 22, 24, where they realize, I also have to work now. Get up in the morning, work every day, and do the same thing. And we're back in the rat race, back in the rat race. And the thing is, we start to live a lesser life, a much lower life. Listen, I am busy with something that is so, so important. This message is the message that are being not just persecuted, but the devil himself will do everything to stop this message from being preached. Because this message gives you identity, position, and it gives you purpose. And not just that, but it brings you into your true reality of who God created you to be. So that you can stand in a place and do things that you could never even imagine you could do. The more I get into this, the more excited I get. The more I see what Jesus has done. And the more I realize how stupid the devil has kept us. 
Because he keeps on banging us against the head and saying, you can't, you can't, you can't because of your sin. You can't, you can't. And then he keeps on doing that. And then my question is, why does the devil do that? Because he's intimidated. He needs to keep you stupid so that he can rule. And then Proverbs come and say, hey, stupid, how long are you going to stay stupid? <laughs> I didn't say it. I can't even say you're stupid. I say, you don't believe in stupid word. So teenagers love this message. Why? Because they realize there's something more than this. There's purpose in this. There's something greater about life than just going to work and, and, and go back and die. Lose yourself in the process. No, there is much more. There is a greater reason why I am here. There is a greater purpose why I am here. And once I understand that purpose and I walk in that purpose, I can go to the fullness of the power that manifests through that position. Oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So, seek first God, His way of doing things, His dominion, His rule, and then find your righteousness in Him. Know who you are in Christ and know who Christ is in you. And then you walk in that, and all these things, things, things that you are seeking every day, all these things, all these things will be added. God says, take your mind off this problem. Look at the birds. Look at the lilies. And you are worried about you. Ja, maar pastoor, mens moet werk en eet en al. Ek weet, ek weet, ek weet, ek weet. I know. Want hy wat die werk hier gaan nie eet nie. I get it. But there's something greater than that. Don't let that be everything. The house that I drive, the house that I drive, the house that I own, the car that I drive, the food that I eat, the clothes that I wear. If that is what life is all about, then just please die and go to heaven because there you need none of it. Ooh. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven it just comes. It's free. Heaven gives you more than what the politicians try to give you. But yet we run after the politician. Oh, oh, oh. No. Run after God. Okay. There's so much that I want to say. And I just need to wrap your head around it. But I'm poking everywhere so that I can get the right response. Because now you're sitting there and you're thinking, my life is more than this. My life is more than getting up in the morning, going to work and come back home. My life is more than this. Yes, your life is more than that. You know what you are? You are a king without a kingdom. That's why you're so frustrated. Because you're supposed to rule things, but you've got nothing to rule. Now you sit there as a king, and you're frustrated because you've got nothing to rule. Well, I'm going to help you in the journey to teach you and show you the first things that God wants us to rule. And if we can take dominion over the first few things, then once we understand that, God can add. God can add. God can add. You are faithful over the little, you become ruler over the much. Okay, so we're going to look at dominion and we're going to look at which areas of your life you should do, do, dominate. You say, Pastor, why do we talk about dominion? Because if you don't understand kingdom and dominion, you will never walk in the overflow of anything. Okay, so it's for purpose. So we read Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness and let them have dominion. So God says, you have been created to look like me, to talk like me, to be like me. God says, I have created you to be a son of God, a daughter of God. Jesus is our older brother. So God created us to be like him, to think like him, to talk like him, to walk like him. That's why the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. We think like Jesus if we are in the spirit and not in the flesh. So he says, let them be like us. Let them be like us. You have been created to be like him. Oh my word, and you still have a bad self-image. I'll say no. Let us make man in our image. Self-image. Not a God complex, a God image. Big difference. If you have a God complex, you think you're God. 
you don't need anybody else. I'm God. I'm all right by myself. No. No. But if I have a God image, I know that I have been created to be like Him. To act like Him. To walk like Him. To talk like Him. Then I will stop look like a commoner and walk like a commoner and talk like a commoner because I'm royalty. Then I will start to walk like a king, talk like a king, act like a king, be like a king. Because that's who he says I am. I don't have to be like all the rest. I don't have to be like the chickens and the turkeys. I know I'm an eagle. And I can walk like it, I can be like it, even though I find myself amongst the eagles, uh, amongst the turkeys and the chickens. But I am not one of them. Okay? Not one of us are one of them. So stop letting the devil beat you in your head and tell you what's wrong with you. Your sin, your shortcomings, all the problems that you have. And you know, he, he uses all this wonderful Hollywood and Disney and all of that to tell you that you're not perfect. He uses all that stuff. And he tries to get you to become something that you've never been created to be. Okay, God doesn't need you to become something that he doesn't want you to be. That the world wants you to be. God wants you to be exactly who He created you to be. So find yourself in Him. In His righteousness. It continues and it says, And let them have dominion. Dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle. Over all the earth. All the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You know, I just drove through Camus this week because we're going to have that crusade there. And the thing that I said to Pastor Nathan that really just bugs me is you drive through these, these places, these settlements, whether it's in town or whether it's in, in the rural area, it doesn't matter. You drive through and the first thing you see is all the papers lying around, the papers and all the gemors. And then we complain and we say, service delivery. Oh my word. I am not going to sit in my house and throw my paper there. It's, it's most probably because mommies does that. The kinders los die papier op die tafel en dan kom tell mama dit nou maar op. Want die government sal dit kom fix. Die government sal my bed opmaak. Die government sal my papier optel. Die government sal my beker was. Die government sal kom. Because your mom is your government in house. Did you know that? So now the government must fix everything. But you're too lazy to get off your backside, pick up your paper and throw it in the dustbin. You're too lazy to walk in the righteousness that God has called you to. Because you just want somebody else to do it for you. That's why people have this passive Christianity. God can save me. God can wash me. God can do everything. I just cruise through life. Man, this die Heere se wil en die Heere se wee en laat hy doen wat hy wil. En nie gaan ek maar net en cruise dier die lewe. No, you have a responsibility, man. That's is nou a mond vol. So maybe the home government must stop spoiling their children because the evidence is now in our streets because somebody always had to come and clean up behind you somebody had to come and make your bed somebody had to come and wash your dishes no teach your children responsibility from the first day teach them to make up their bed at least if they make up their bed in the morning they will feel better about themselves for the rest of the day because they've accomplished something i mean it's a sense of achievement if you made up your bed you get up, you make up your bed, you walk out. The next time you walk into your room, you're like, ah, oh, it feels so neat. Your first sense of accomplishment. <laughs> now, these young men are not lekker for me. I will nog in my muff leave from last week. I stink sokje van drie weke terug, wil ek onder my bed uitgrabe. Hoe hy hier sê? Ek dog al eens gesteel. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Yeah, cleanliness is next to godliness. If we want kingdom, the first thing about a kingdom is everything is clean. Because people take responsibility. People don't expect anybody else to do it for them. They take responsibility for their place. It's amazing how you can drive through a, through a community and you can see this person has taken responsibility. Everything is clean. The trees are nice. There are grass, everything. Then you go through the next house and you think, what happened here? Are there somebody living here? Or is this now the dump yard? Just the difference because of responsibility. You say, Pastor, why are you talking about this? Because it comes back to dominion, dominating dominating you can see when somebody dominates chaos or when chaos dominates a person 
He says, and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Say it. it. You know, the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwells in it. And we're going to talk about that once we have enough time. The earth is the Lord's. Planet earth belongs to God. It's His. Everything that dwells in it, the fullness thereof, it all belongs to God. God made it. Okay? But God made it for a purpose. God made it to be ruled. God made it to be dominated. God made it for a purpose. So, for the earth to be ruled and dominated, God had to find a man or a person that will rule it. And that's why the Bible says, let them have dominion over the earth. The earth is the Lord's, but the management of the earth belongs to humanity. Everything on this planet is given to us so that we account for it, that we subdue it, we take care of it, that we rule it, that we dominate it. You might say, but pastor, now we are too many people to dominate it. Well, then dominate your part at least. Dominate the yard that you have. Dominate the house that you have. Rule the house that you have. Take care of it. Because then at least when you go to heaven, you will be one of the ten that got the talents. And God will say, hey, look at what this one has done. He had not one. He, had, he started with one, but now he's got ten. Because he dominates through faithfulness. And because he dominates through faithfulness, this one, I can promote him. But the one that just took his house and he dug it, dug a hole between the, all the rubble and he kept it there and now he comes and here's my house Lord let it be taken away from him you know what's interesting about that scripture and look it says that those 10 people that came back with the talents God gave them rulership according to the talents that they had the one had one talent and then he multiplied to 10 and God gave him 10 cities to rule that's what the Bible says phase 3 ok here is my opinion but I think this is very hard because the more I learn to get to know God, the more I see the reality of this. Once you understand kingdom, you know that earth is, pro- is our prototype. Yes, this is the prototype. Okay? And once we have done with this prototype, you're going to go to heaven. But God never created you for heaven. Yes, you were never created for heaven. God created you for a purpose to rule and God can't have you in heaven because he's ruling so now you go from king to becoming prince when you go from earth to heaven you lose your position you just are a son of the king where on earth you're a king but you go to heaven now you're a prince because there's a king already which tells me that there is a transition period we're going to sit with the king we're going to give record record of what we've done and then god is going to give us something that's the bible he says and then he's going to reward us reward us with what i always ask myself why must there be so so many billions of planets out there because what's god going to do with all of them and then this is my little opinion then i think by myself but if god wants us to be like him then god will give us an opportunity to rule like him and God will give us our planets of our own. And will God will give us our creation of our own. Because why would God not want us to do what He did? But we first have to take this prototype. Then I think somebody like Elon Musk is not that far-fetched. When he wants to take Mars. Then I think, maybe you understand more about kingdom than most of us. Mm, go think about that. But that's opinion. We don't preach opinion. Just think about it. So he says, and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. There is something about that. That word dominion, we spoke about it last time. It says sovereign or supreme authority. Sovereign or supreme authority. You know, that's something strong. When God says sovereign or supreme authority, it means it's higher than being a king. It is being a god sovereign is God sovereign sovereign authority sovereign authority like God oh wow I'm getting somewhere it's gonna bless you and then he continues and he says power of governance and controlling 
independent right of possession independent right of possession use and control sovereignty or supremacy i want to show you something so god said let them have dominion so god created man in his image in the likeness of man god created him male and female he created them man and woman created equal and then he continues verse 28 then god blessed them mm. then god empowered them to prosper ja jylle wat mos nou nie aan prosperity preaching glo nie sorry suck it up there it is in the bible god empowers you to prosper what does prosper mean prosper is not just money it means every area of your life to multiply to subdue to rule all of it so and then he continues he says and god said to them be fruitful and multiply be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it oh let's stop there why is this world government this new age and whatever why is their biggest concern that earth is overpopulated ach kom nou denk julle nou covid was sommer net 'n grappie gewees oopsie 'n pandemie het kyk no it's there for world population control because there is an agenda there's too many people on earth so we have to unleash this virus that will come and they will come some more in the future so just stay awake please and stay with god so that you are wise in all of it not because i'm a doom prophet i'm just telling you as it is that's bible it's it's going to happen the bible tells us in the book of revelations that two thirds of humanity will be destroyed two thirds i mean imagine pandemic boom two thirds of the earth gone okay now she'll bang nee die here het jou nie gees van vreesagtigheid gegee nie maar van liefde krag en is <laughs> what i'm saying is there is an agenda against the kingdom god's kingdom says fill the earth and subdue it multiply and fill it multiply and fill it it's a command from god so who in this world does this world system think they are to come and control human population on that sounding a little bit like another god doesn't that sound a bit like the devil that wants to control because the devil knows better than all of us if we reach the target of population and multiplication guess what's going to happen then god's going to come and say hey well done you've done what i told you to do so now let's move on to plan b the second part let's move on to phase 2 of this whole creation. So Satan knows that he has to do whatever he can to stop these things so that he can control. You know, he's fighting a losing battle but he's relentless. Because first of all, he's got kings to deal with and there's 7 billion of them on earth and he's trying to get all 7 billion of them not to believe that they are kings and he's doing a pretty good job and then he is trying to teach those 7 billion people that it's okay to abort the next generation of kings their children abortion legalize abortion kill all the kings that is supposed to rule when we are not there they have to rule so that he can't rule so he's got a plan then he wants to have world population control so that he can take out all the useless eaters ask yourself who decides whether you are a useless eater kingdom I am saying all of this because I need you to understand once you get to know who you are and why you are here and where you are positioned that you will understand your full authority and power so that your greatest battle is not not to look at the girl with the bikini because for some young people that's their greatest battle ek moet nie kyk ek moet nie kyk ek moet nie kyk ag here jy is gemaak om baie meer as dit te wees jy is gemaak om in Godse beeld te wees that that is not your biggest battle to fight that should be the first thing that you can conquer like this but that you can stand and realize this is who I am that is nothing once you understand your purpose that little thing just dissipates boom it's not an issue anymore okay i've got a lot that we have to cover in a short time of period but i trust the holy spirit to provoke you because this is what i'm doing i'm provoking i'm demolishing certain mental ideas and i am shaking some concepts because we have to get to the right concept to the original idea of why god created all of these things so that we understand there's a much greater task ahead of us 
a much greater task. It's not overwhelming. It's not to get you in a place where you sit and you are afraid or where you sit in a place where you feel defeated. No, 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 no. It is to let you understand that, hey, you don't know who you are. I want you to realize exactly who you are and what God created you to be so that you understand that you are a conquering Christian, that you understand that you're an overcomer, that you understand that you are above and not beneath, over, going over and not under, that you're hidden not to tell. I need you to understand that. And once you know who you are, I need you to start to take dominion are you with me it continues it says and then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it subdue it have dominion subdue it have dominion so the question subdue what does subdue mean listen to this subdue means to overcome God gives you a challenge there's the earth, overcome it. There's the world, overcome it. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. So whatever you attempt, there is a vision, overcome it. Oh, there's a purpose. I have to overcome this, this, this thing that looks like a giant, but it's actually a blessing. I have to build that building because that's what God said. I give you dominion in Uppington. I give you position in Uppington. I give you purpose in Uppington. Now, I give you a job in Uppington. Go build that building and overcome it. Because once you have overcome the first one, you're going to overcome the second one and the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one. Overcome it. Don't live life and say, well, Lord, make it easy for me. No, God is just going to say, hello, you are a king. That's who you are. You are like me. You can't live without a challenge. You can't live without something to overcome. Because overcoming gives you purpose. Overcoming gives you some blood pumping in your veins. So when everything looks like it is impossible, God says, I've placed you right there and I have given you everything you need, plus my Holy Spirit. I have given you all. So now it's your time to overcome that situation. Yeah. Subdue means to bring under control, which means it's out of control. You have to bring control back. Uh, to bring it under control things are out of control you have to bring it under control you know those times that you wake up in the morning and you look at everything and it just overwhelms you and you like you feel spun out of control and you're like Jesus help me yeah guess what God has placed you there to realign everything and bring it under control that is what is placed in you that is what he has given you that's why the Bible says he will never tempt you above what you cannot handle so if you're in a place where you think, God, I can't handle this, then he says, greater is he that is in thee than he that is in the world. By my spirit, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. He says, here I am with you. He comes and he says, I give you my spirit. All you need to do is be led by my spirit. And if you're led by my spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but you will overcome. You will overcome. So you're not alone even. God gives us Dominion. That's my title. Praise the Lord. God gives us dominion. So let me quickly in the last two minutes talk about this. The first area that God gives us to dominate. The first area that God gives us to subdue. The first area that God wants us to have possession, authority, power, control is our It's the first one. Because the Bible says, he that can control the tongue can control his life. If you can control this thing, you can control everything. If you can handle your tongue, you can handle anything. That's why your tongue needs to be under the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why... The first thing that happens to you after you gave your life to Jesus and you went through obedience to be baptized, the very first thing that God comes to touch you to change your culture, your culture into the kingdom culture, the very first thing that He does is He baptizes you in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in another tongue. Because if you can't speak the language, you can't roam the country. 
If I can't speak English, it's going to be difficult in England. If I can't speak Portuguese, it's going to be difficult in Brazil. You hear what I'm saying? You feel like a stranger. It's going to be difficult to be a Christian, but you can't speak in tongues. So. But religion comes in. Ja, maar talen is niet voor allemaal nie. En talen was net in Jesus' tuin. En my, my, my. Ja, Satan. Preek dier die ou ongerede predikers. When you can speak in the Holy Ghost, you've got control over your tongue in God's kingdom. And this is why it's so difficult, because it's a spiritual thing. In your spirit, you know it's right. In your mind, in your flesh, your head's like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But tell me, what about Jesus ever made sense? That walking on the water makes sense? That rising dead, raising dead people from the dead, was that, did that make sense? Did it make sense to spit in somebody's eye and he can see? Did anything that Jesus do make sense? Nothing made sense. That's why he says, if I can get a hold of your tongue, I change your life. But if you get a hold of your tongue, you direct your life. You can go places. The power in your tongue is a kingdom power. It's a kingdom of life, light, or it is a kingdom of death, darkness. I have given you Life and death is in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. And those who love it and indulge in it will eat the fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Then I say, Jesus, please help me that this tongue, you know, I said to my family, I said to my family, in the beginning of this year, I said, listen, 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 listen. My kids will tell you, my wife will tell you. I said to them, we have to make sure that this year, we as the Fender family, that the first thing that we get a hold of is our tongues. Because there ain't no overflow if your tongue is not giving the right overflow. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth gives overflow. And what comes out of the mouth is created and becomes your reality. So what you speak becomes. What you speak becomes. What you speak becomes, but it comes out of your heart. So the treasure of my heart needs to be God. We have to have a positive, good treasure. What do I really believe? I really believe that God is in control. I really believe that God is going to supply. I really trust in God. So because the treasure of my heart is set, now out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth will speak. So when pressure comes, what comes out of you? Boom! Because that becomes kingdom reality. God created this earth through his tongue let there be light let there be and god created so my question to you is in your kingdom reality what comes out of your mouth let there be what and i yesterday i stood there now you can yell and think it is flaky but thank my your flaky it is fine i could the reality i've seen it over and over again yesterday i stood again and um a few weeks ago there was a big storm when we were in Bronco Sprite and a lot of the trees at my house fell over thank God not one hit the house because it's big trees some of you will know big trees as young van I boom op ice fall as ice plat okay so and there was the storm and the storm came through and the tak het gevlieg and the tak het gekraak and the boom het geval not one on a house not one on a car they all just went all over the place thank God for that so yesterday I'm standing there and suddenly comes this wind again. And I see this and I can work kraki taka. And I'm standing there and I say, Lord, the Bible says that you commanded the wind to subside. So I stood there outside and I say, wind. And in the name of Jesus, you shall know freedom rock that can rain, but it can not wind wine. And I walked. And we sat on the, on the front porch drinking coffee. I look at my wife and I say, okay, how still is it now? Why is even no? <laughs> Not because I think I'm all powerful, but yet if we just fathom a little bit, a little bit of our kingdom authority, maybe we will start to change things. And that will come back to that question, why does a good God let bad things happen? And then I ask, why do we allow it? Because dominion is ours. To dominate, to control, and to overcome. 
to dominate, to control and to overcome. To dominate, to control and to overcome the wind. To dominate, to control, to overcome these things, these natural laws. But the first thing that we need to learn is to dominate, to control and overcome our time. Because this creates everything. Listen to this and then I'm done. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 to 15, it says, It is written. Oh, I love it. It is written. It is written. I believe, therefore, I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus in the presence, us with you to himself. Okay. The same one who raised Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the same one when God said, let there be the Holy Spirit created. Genesis 1 verse 1. God created. And then verse 2. And the earth was without form and it was void. And the Spirit of God was hovering above the water. So the Spirit was present. Creation was present. But nothing happened. Until God said, let there be. When God said, let there be, the Holy Spirit took the energy and He created it. Boom. Talk about the big bang. When the Holy Spirit moves, there's a big bang. So, God comes and He says, He says, because the same spirit of faith, the same spirit of faith, the same spirit of faith, the same spirit of faith that created the universe, the same spirit of faith which called light out of darkness, the same spirit of faith that created the impossible, the possible out of the impossible, that same spirit, that is the same spirit available to you and me. And if we can bring this thing under the control of that same spirit, imagine, imagine, just imagine. Oh, my time is up. I've got to stop there. Have you learned something today? Yeah. Oh, come on. Let's stand. Give, give Jesus a praise. Come on, right there we are. Just praise Him for it. Oh, out of your mouth. Out of your mouth. Overflow out of your mouth. Okay. CRC. That's why we are loud and shouting and screaming because we understand the power of this thing. Okay? These sound waves, what they can create with faith. The same spirit of faith which is in you that comes out of your mouth. So family, I'm asking you please, when things get tough, be careful what comes out of your mouth. Because you can destroy your whole future by saying something stupid. And you're not stupid, so don't say something stupid. Please, I'm asking you. That's why we have to pray. Partij van ons weet ek, ons sikkel meer as ander. Partij van ons is stil, and you can keep your mouth shut, but some of us, gee, you have spoken even before you thought about what you're going to say. So I know, we need more grace. I'm also like that. If somebody makes me mad, I'm coming, blah, blah, he ate, and then I'm like, just hold it back. Bridle the tongue, hold it back. Okay? So that's why you pray that God will put a guard before your mouth. Tell the Holy Spirit, Clamp my tongue when I want to say bad things, please. Convict me, convict me, convict me, convict me, so that I don't say it. Are you with me? Amen. But you have to ask Him, because it's, it's, it's this dual rulership with the Holy Spirit. And bring yourself under control and say, Holy Spirit, I am going to put your words in my mouth. I'm going to put your spirit in my mouth. I'm going to put your life in my mouth. And I'm going to start to speak what you speak. Lord, help me with the areas where I miss it. Oh, each one of us has to repent about the things that we have said this week, even this morning to the children when they didn't behave. Uh, we all have to bite our tongue. But the thing is, if we can learn to control this first, out of that, oh my word. Because with this same tongue, the Bible says, you can speak blessing and cursing. With the same tongue, you can destroy something or you can build something. And then it is good for us to learn to control this thing. Okay, and it only comes under the unction of the Holy Spirit, under the control of the Holy Spirit. Because in yourself, you can't. In your flesh, you can't. But when you are full of the Holy Ghost, He can help you to keep a hold of this thing. 
It doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. It just means you're going to be less imperfect. Because it's a journey. Overcoming. A journey. Overcoming. Subduing. Overtaking. It's a process. But there comes a place where you can walk in the authority of God. The authority of God where you can't imagine what you can do. Because you step into dominion. God's dominating power and it's released number one through your tongue according to what you say according to what you believe father we thank you for your presence this morning i pray holy spirit that even as we learn through this lord jesus that you will help us lord i pray that no person will leave this place condemned that no person will leave this place feeling worse about themselves but lord that as we walk out of this place that we will be built up lord that we will be stirred that we will become more curious and hungry about the kingdom, that we want to know more, that we want to step into that authority that you have given us. Lord Jesus, you said, if I did it, you can do it. Lord, there's many things that you have done that we're still not walking in. And we want to walk in it, Lord Jesus. We want to do what you did. We want to show this world that God's kingdom is above. Lord, that they will not even be able to fathom what you are doing, Lord Jesus. That it will just be completely supernatural. We don't, don't have to go to the dark side to find supernatural, but we just watch Christians daily and see how supernatural things can be. When we understand who we are, I pray, Lord Jesus, establish our identity in Jesus' name. While every head is bowed, every eye closed. You came to this place this morning, and if I ask you if you are born again, you say, no, what's that? It means that you were born physically, but you were born spiritually. You see, the Bible says, if you're not born again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. It says, if you're not born again, you will not see it, which means you will not understand it. You will not fathom it. You will not be able to be part of it. And God says, if you come to me and you give, you, give my, your life to me, I will come and I will rebirth you by my spirit and my spirit will live in you and my spirit will reveal these things to you. He will show you things to come. He will lead you and guide you in all truth. He will be your comforter, your counselor. My Holy Spirit will become your eyes in the spiritual realm and your ears in the spiritual realm. He will show you things. He will show you what I want you to be like. He will establish your identity. He will make you righteous. But yours is to surrender to Him. And today... You're standing in this place and you say, but I'm not born again. I haven't given my life to Jesus. Today I want to be born again. Then Jesus will come today and He will fill your heart with the Holy Spirit and He will give you a new birth experience. Maybe you're standing here, you say, Pastor, once I did give my life to Jesus, but I kind of drifted away and I started to live my own life. I took Jesus off the throne of my heart and I started to live for myself. And I know now that I have to come back before I lose my purpose. I want to find my purpose and walk in my purpose. And today, Jesus is here. And He wants to realign you. He wants to wash you, forgive you of all unrighteousness. And He wants to place you back in the position of righteousness. Allow Him to do so today. So all over this place, every head bowed, every eye closed, you say, Pastor, you're talking to me. My life is not right with God. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. Or you want to come back to Jesus. Then quickly, wherever you are, don't think about this twice. Respond to the call. If that is you, you say, Pastor, you're talking to me. Then I want you to quickly lift up your hand. Say, yes, here I am. Please pray for me, Pastor. I want to give my life to Jesus. Come on, all over this place. If that's you, you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to come back to Jesus. Quickly lift up your hand right now. Just raise it up, raise it up, raise it up, raise it up. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Back there in the front, there on the left, on the right. Thank you. Many hands going up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. There in the other locations, if that's you, in the, in the correctional service, if that's you, quickly lift your hand right now. Thank you, thank you, in Jesus' name. Yes, come on, don't fight it. Surrender. We don't fight God, we surrender to God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Once you raise your hand, you can put it down. Please look at me. I can't save you. I can just take you to the Savior. Okay, and I can pray a prayer with you where, where you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, God comes and He saves you. And he set you free. So I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Maybe you raised your hand. Maybe you did not raise your hand. But you want to be included in this prayer to give your life to Jesus. So all over this place, if that is you, please, this is the time to respond. Don't stay in your seat. I would love for you to come down to the altar. The altar is the place where we lay our lives down before Jesus. So I want to ask you right now, if that's you, 
You want to give your life to Jesus. You raised your hand. You did not, but you know you need to get right with God. I want you to leave your seat and I want you to come down the aisle. We're going to sing a song. I want you to come down and stand right at the altar. Come on. Come on. Can have it all. Come to Jesus. Jesus, who can have it all. there and you want to walk you can still come but you know exactly this is exactly what I'm talking about when we talk about kingdom who are the people that respond a lot of teenagers because it just makes sense you are here for a purpose God created you for a purpose so thank you for responding thank you for coming it's the greatest 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 privilege to pray with each one of you your life is valuable God loves you there is such a great future. And it doesn't matter what you've been through. Your past is not what matters. What matters is your future. From this day on, what you're going to become, what you're going to do for God. What you've done up until now, God will forgive it. And He says, I even I am He that blotteth out your transgressions. And He says, I remove them as far as the east is from the west. And He says the following, He says, I choose to forget them. I mean, God choose to forget your sin. Who are people? To remind you of what you've done don't let people tell you who you are let god tell you who you are that's who you are washed in the blood of jesus saved sanctified right with god amen so we're gonna pray that prayer we're gonna pray this prayer this morning and we're gonna get you in the right place okay in right standing before god in right standing before god so please put your hand on your heart and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Lord, I believe that you died for my sin on the cross and I receive your forgiveness. I believe, Jesus, that you rose from the dead and you are seated in heaven. You are the Son of God. I believe that you send your Holy Spirit so that I can have life. I receive your Spirit now. Holy Spirit, fill me. Show me things to come. Lead me. Give me my purpose. I want to know you more. Please come and introduce yourself to me. I want to know you. I choose to live my life for you, Jesus, for the, all the days that I'm alive and all eternity. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, there is such a strong presence of the anointing here. I'm telling you, when God's presence comes like this, you can wear a grog so much in my but because His presence comes, His presence comes, His presence comes. This message needs to be preached. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, this gospel, this message of the gospel of the kingdom of God must be preached to the whole world as a witness. Then the end shall come. Listen, family, we have such an important purpose here we carry a message that was given to a messenger and God brought it to Uppington so that we can create the base that out of this base we can teach more people the kingdom so that more people can walk in this authority and that they can go anywhere in the world and not having to worry about anything 
but only one thing and that is the purpose of this kingdom message being preached for people to be reconciled to God to find their purpose to find their position in God this is the job that God has given us so so let's let's take it serious and let's build let's build in Jesus name it's such a privilege to have prayed with you uh, we want to pray for each one of you individually so we've got a wonderful team that's going to s- spend some time with you nothing weird nothing strange we just want to love on you so please will you just turn to your left my right just follow the leaders over there come on let's give them a hand as they go amen amen family you can take your seat for a moment I want you to watch the screens for our CRC Cares video and then the ushers will rise and take up the offering. Come on, let's let's engage with the CRC Cares this year. Um, we are doing phenomenal things as CRC, but also CRC Cares specifically. They're doing amazing work. All those school bags, I should have brought one of the school bags with me. All the school bags that we could give to the children because of the generosity of this church. It's amazing. Every other year as the church we had to raise the funds, but this year was the first year that CRC Cares did it all by themselves in uh, collaboration with the Kids Church. It's phenomenal so that we can bless young children. So we want to do more next year and more the year after. Many schools ask us, please come and help us. We would love to do that. We don't just want to help CRC people, but um, we need to, to, to trust the Lord for more funds so that we can do more for God. So please, Valentine's Day. We're only on a plan to make movies, look, cake, and all around the fryer.